Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm hauling the 5320 right now. I'm in the F-250, I got our stuff, I got Ivy with me. We're road tripping from eastern Wyoming to western Tennessee. But in this video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a story about one time I accidentally got to drive a fire truck and I really didn't want to. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, yeah. So about 10 years ago, I worked for an equipment dealership in Tennessee. And I was a field mechanic, but I had my CDL. So part of my job was to drive our semi truck hauling equipment. And we were based just right barely outside of Nashville and I was taking a full load down to a customer in Cleveland, Tennessee. And Cleveland, Tennessee is just a little bit north of Chattanooga on I-75. From our shop to that customer was approximately, you know, like a three, three and a half hour drive. And it was a pretty typical day for the most part. I had left the, sh I had got loaded, left the shop, everything was going great, got through Chattanooga. And I was actually going north out of Chattanooga up toward Cleveland on I-75. And it was kind of wet and kind of raining. Not raining hard, but there was just that kind of steady mist in the air that never really went away. So the roads were wet, but, you know, not really that bad. So as I was coming up the, the freeway there out of Chattanooga there on I-75, I was in the far right lane like I am now and where I was there's a concrete barrier on the right. I was in the lane immediately next to the concrete barrier and on my left there was another semi and then up in front of him there was a small car. It was a dark colored car. I want to say it was like a dark green but I, I can't remember exactly. I think it was dark green but that doesn't matter. Anyway, we're, we're hauling along up the road and the car that was one lane over was in front of me by maybe 50 yards, 60 yards, something like that. Not a whole lot when you're in a, you know, 80,000 pound truck going 65 miles an hour. So we're going up the road and all of a sudden, I, I have puzzled about this ever since it happened but all of a sudden the guy in this car merges into my lane and stops he didn't slow down he didn't tap his brakes he came to a complete solid stop right in the middle of the interstate and i i had nowhere to go i had absolutely nowhere to go there was a barrier on my right the truck was still on my left. The only thing I could do was I remember I hit the clutch, I hit the brake, I grabbed the air horn and I just started watching that truck on my left because as soon as I had room I was cutting over. And I, I was mentally, I was preparing myself to take my truck right into the side of his trailer to miss that car. Because in an accident like that, you know, you get you get rear-ended by an 80,000 pound truck, you're gonna die. At least if I sideswiped that guy's trailer, the odds of somebody getting hurt were a whole lot less. But in the, the split seconds that this is happening, I'm pulling on the air horn, standing on the brakes, calling the guy in that car everything under the sun. <laughs> I don't know if he heard me screaming at him to move or if the horn woke him up or if he looked in his mirror and saw this giant red Kenworth bearing down on him. But he I, he stomped on the gas, shot down the road and got out of the way. Crisis averted, right? Yeah, everything should be fine. He's gone. I let off the brakes. I let off the air horn. I kind of sank back into the seat and you know, collected myself, and it felt like all this took a couple of minutes, but again, in reality, it couldn't have been more than just a few seconds, just a handful of seconds. And as I was getting my wits back about me, I realized, even though I had let go of the air horn, it had not stopped blowing. <laughs> now, for those of you that are familiar with semis, you understand probably right now why that's a problem. But for the ones who may not be, 
uh, aside from the fact that I just have the freaking air horn going off and it won't quit, that's problem number one. But problem number two is the air horn on a truck and the air brake system run off the same air supply. They run off the same tanks and they run off the same compressor on the engine. And semi-truck air brakes, I'm going to be real, real general here. I'm not going to get into details, but semi-truck air brakes are, they use air to release the parking brake. The parking brake is applied by a giant coil spring, and it's designed that way as a fail-safe so that if you rupture a brake line or something, you're, you don't lose your brakes and go careening out of control. The, when your air pressure gets below 60 PSI, the parking brake springs automatically begin to apply. Which is great if you're going down the road and blow a brake line and are potentially about to be out of control. It is a really big problem when you are on the interstate just barely out of downtown Chattanooga and your air horn won't quit blowing and your brakes are beginning to apply themselves. <laughs> and there's nowhere to pull over. So I'm going up the road here, the air horn's blowing, I'm watching the, the air pressure gauge needle just start dropping, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is bad, but if I can get off the road here somewhere, I can fix it. This isn't the end of the world. But there was that concrete barrier beside me. There was nowhere I could pull over so I started looking for an exit ramp. And just maybe a couple hundred yards ahead, there was an exit ramp. And I remember vividly, it was like one or two exits past Shalliford Road. And I remember Shalliford Road because that's the, the overpass I was going under when the guy in that car tried to get himself killed. So the exit ramp had a stoplight up at the top of it. And there were a handful of cars waiting at the light. And to the right of those cars, there's this big, nice, wide shoulder. And I'm thinking, this is perfect. I can, you know, I'll take that exit, I'll pull right off on the shoulder, I'll get this sorted out, and then get right back on the interstate. Everything's cool, right? Wrong. <laughs> Here I come toward this exit ramp. In my big red Kenworth, with the horn blowing and the engine screaming. And I didn't know it at the time, but that area of Chattanooga has, a, a, or they did have a couple of red Kenworth fire trucks. So when all the people sitting at this stoplight see this big red truck barreling down on them with the horn blowing, they all said, oh, that must be a fire truck. So every last one of them pulled over on the shoulder. <laughs> That's the right thing to do when there's a fire truck coming up behind you, but it was the exact wrong thing for me because they had just blocked exactly where I was trying to go and I couldn't stop on the exit ramp because then I'd be blocking a, a major exit right outside downtown Chattanooga. So, Time for a new plan, right? Time to recalculate. I hit the exit ramp, and as I'm going to the top, I'm downshifting like crazy. And I'm downshifting for two reasons. One, I'm trying to keep my engine RPM up. The air compressor on a semi is driven off the engine. The faster the engine's turning, the faster the compressor's turning, the faster the compressor's turning, the more airflow it's putting out, and I needed air to try to keep up with the massive drain that was being created by that stuck air horn. It wasn't going to do it, but I needed every little bit I could get. So I got this truck pegged at the red line, and I'm just downshifting through the gears, trying to, trying to keep my air pressure up and getting to the point I'm trying to overpower the parking brakes because they were starting to come on. And when they come on and lock up, you're done. You're stopped. So here I am trying to, you know, I got the engine screaming, the horn blowing, the parking brakes are starting to come on and they're starting to squall a little bit. So I hit the top of this exit ramp and I'm looking for anywhere I can go. 
and on my right there was like a mall and a shopping center and a frontage road so I figured okay I got businesses businesses obviously have to get deliveries on semi trucks there's got to be somewhere in here I can go so I get to the top of the ramp I whip a right and the first business I see is a mattress firm and I, re I remember thinking all right mattress firm it looks open it looks like I can get in there so I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit the main I'm gonna come off the exit hit the main road whip right on the frontage road and then right into mattress firm perfect right wrong <laughs> Nothing went perfect on this for me. I whip a right on the frontage road, and then I realize every business on the frontage road has those little, uh, I don't know if you call them curbs or medians or what, but it's that little, like a six inch high curb, and then there's like a dirt strip where they were planting grass and little trees and things that was maybe three or four feet wide. And the entrances were all just wide enough for like, a car. There was absolutely no way I was going to be able to make that turn in a loaded semi and and not run over four or five little trees. So I just figured I'm committed to this frontage road because I'm sure not going to stop because as soon as I stopped I'd be done. Because the parking brakes, as, as time is clicking by here, the parking brakes are applying harder and harder and harder so I whip a right on the frontage road past Mattress Firm and just keep going. And I'm looking for anything with an entrance that looks wide enough I can get in. And I'm not seeing much of anything. I don't know how far down that road I went, but I, I ended up in uh, third gear, third gear out of a 10-speed Eaton Road Ranger, third gear out of a 10-speed transmission, pedal to the floor going like five or six miles an hour horn blowing brakes screaming the brakes are starting to smoke at this point when I finally saw a driveway on the left I didn't know what it was I didn't care I was taking it so I come up to it I hang a left I hit that driveway come up the little embankment the parking lot couldn't have been better because the whole row of parking spaces right in front of where that driveway was were empty. So perfect, right? I got a nice big parking lot. I can get into it. I make my left. I pull up across like 20 parking spaces or however many you take up in a semi. Because I was across them sideways. And I shut the truck down. I pulled the parking brake knob. I didn't have to because they were already freaking on. Uh, and I just sat there while the air, even though the truck was off, the air horn was still broken. It was still blowing. And it blew until it drained down every last pound of air that was in that system. So after I kind of collected myself again, I realized I was sitting in the parking lot of a Jay Alexander's restaurant at like 12.15 on a weekday. And there are all these people had come out of the restaurant <laughs> to see what in the world had just happened. What kind of catastrophe had just come skidding into their parking lot. And of course here I come climbing out of this truck with three or four big pieces of equipment on the back you know the brakes are rolling smoke and it was just yeah I I, I got noticed <laughs> I put it that way I, I got noticed everybody knew I was there so the truck finally runs out of air I took the overhead console apart and found the air horn valve had broken inside I guess when I pulled on it in my moment of terror thinking I was about to kill that guy because I was literally about to kill that guy if he hadn't moved or I hadn't uh, been able to find somewhere else to go but apparently I pulled on it hard enough I broke the little piece inside that shut it off. So <laughs> I disconnected the supply line. I disconnected the line that came from the air system to the valve and I didn't have anything to cap it with because, you know, that little quarter-inch plastic airline, there's just not much 
unless you have a fitting for it, you know, you can't thread it, you can't, you can't do anything. So what I ended up doing was just folding it over on itself two or three times and clamping it off with a pair of vice grips so that it would hold air pressure and just let me get my job done. I, it, you know, it disabled the air horn because I had disconnected it from the valve, but at least with it clamped off, uh, the air system could build pressure, the brakes would release, and everything but the horn would work properly. So I probably spent, I, I probably spent 45 minutes to an hour in that parking lot, you know, letting letting the brakes cool off, getting my airline sorted out, getting all that fixed as best I could fix it. And then I called the office and said, hey, I just thought you guys would like to know what happened in case you're getting phone calls from people wanting to know why your truck is, you know, causing a scene in the middle of a, a very nice restaurant's parking lot down here. But I got it fixed well enough to use, went on, I made my delivery. After I made my delivery up in Cleveland, I was coming back through Chattanooga going home, going back up to Nashville, and I stopped at the Peterbilt dealer there in Chattanooga. Because for those of you who don't know, Peterbilt and Kenworth are owned by the same company, they're owned by Packar. And a lot, at least on the truck we had, on our, the T800 I was driving, uh, a lot of parts would interchange, so we would sometimes buy Kenworth parts from the Peterbilt dealer. But there was a Peterbilt dealer there. I swung in there, bought a new horn valve, threw it in, and problem solved. Back on the road. So it wasn't it wasn't the way I wanted that day to work out for sure, because I was thinking it would be a pretty simple day. You know, it's like a three-hour drive down there, spend. Uh, spend a couple hours at the customer's site getting unloaded, going over the equipment, making sure they're comfortable and happy. Then I'd make my three hour drive back to the shop, get in my service truck and go home and everything would be fine. But it just didn't work out that way. It worked out fine in the end. I just, uh, I just had a little excitement uh, there in the process. So. That's the time I accidentally got to drive a fire truck. I thought it was pretty funny. I hope you did. If you enjoyed this video, hit like. If this is your first time here, please subscribe. Not all my videos are just stories about things going wrong. Sometimes it happens live on camera. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm hauling the 5320 down here to Tennessee. I just hit I-76 I'm merging on from I-80 right now here in Nebraska and I'm going to be dropping this tractor off picking up a 1948 Ford 8N bringing it back to Wyoming and then we're going to completely rebuild it so thanks for watching and more later